when we first started, Tony, who's the CEO, he came to me and said, oh, I'm going to be CEO of this oat drink company. And I thought, oat drink, I have no idea what that is. Maybe we can take out the oats and do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of the start point. We did quite the opposite actually in the end is that that's the whole key to everything. My name is John Schoolcraft. I'm the creative director at Oakley. We said from the beginning it looked kind of like a Dutch multinational, you know, just indistinguishable from anything else. If you look historically, it's like some researchers trying to come up with a better option to milk. And they found that oats have all these nutritional values and you could make a milk out of it. It was great. So there was this very kind of entrepreneurial startup feeling to the company the whole time. It's just that as it gradually grew, it turned into a Procter & Gamble out in the field, you know, a, a, a very small 50, 50 employees, but it was acting like a major multinational, you know. Back in 2012, Tony became CEO, and I started working kind of in stealth, so just working on a re looking at how we could move the brand in a different direction. I grew up in the U.S. You just you just ate meat all the time, and then when you when you work here, you see all the numbers and the statistics and all the scientific reports, and you realize that animal-based eating is killing the planet and killing people. <laughs> So for us, it was just a matter of looking back to see what it was really about, seeing the fact that it's a fantastic product that helps a lot of people. And then from there, kind of trying to do something more than just sell a product, kind of to move into the, okay, well, how do we increase the growth of plant-based products? You know, So it became a kind of a bigger, more visionary ambition. The big foot on the pack, we've run that in The Guardian. as a full page ad, it's like, here's what we believe. And there's some very political statements. Brands don't do that. At the same time, if you're not willing to, to stand up to the big boys and, and show a different way, <laughs> um, I don't know, you just get lost, I guess. Being a challenger brand means you're constantly threat of getting sued, of the newspapers ringing you, of threatening everyone else's job because they're doing a really good job, and maybe you're saying something controversial and it's working against what they're doing. It's, it's very difficult. It's all-encompassing. It's maybe more of a mindset of actually realizing that you're trying to do something differently than you're just trying to be a challenger for, because you want to sell a product and make money then I think people will be able to feel it. Oh, they're trying to be challenger and cool because they want to sell their product. And we, we, obviously we want to sell our product, but we want to kind of challenge the norms at the same time. And that's maybe bigger. Mm -hmm.